YouTube. Today in the Naughty Librarian, I am doing my March wrap up. I read another 14 books this month. <laughs> anyway, 14 books. That's a lot of books. I don't want this like wrap up to be an age and a half long, so let's just get right into it. First category is epic fantasy, and I read four of those this month. First up, I have Queen of Shadows by Sarah J. Maz. This is kind of the midpoint of the series for Throne of Glass. And you know what? If that series was like a lava cake, this is its fudge core. Ooh, it's just, it's so, it's so liquid because all these characters are definitely at a crossroads and the decisions they make right now are going to influence the rest of the series. A lot of these characters, they don't really know what's best but they have to like you know make up their minds before something else happens so there's a lot of like indecision in here but like I really enjoyed that because it's a lot of like opportunity for character study and the thing I really really like about Sarah J Maz's writing style is that always when I'm reading her books I feel like she is showing not telling and I feel like Sarah J Maz allows her characters to just exist and she never goes out and just says what their problem is she lets you see the problem as it unfolds and I really appreciate that just from a character study perspective like a literary sense I I love it I think her writing style is very captivating and I, I gotta turn the next page I have to see what happens next it's like one of those things that keeps pulling me in Next up, I read The Language of Thorns by Lee Bardugo. I mainly read this because I was told by a few people that it was definitely important for me to read this before I read King of Scars. So I went into it reading it and I knew like this book was uh, visually stunning. Like I did kind of buy it just for like, you know, art appeal because like it's illustrated all the way through and they have these beautiful drawings and I love it. It's just like a great little book of folk tales from all of the different like cultures from the Grishaverse. And it was, it's just kind of like a fun little book, a fun interlude. It felt like it just gives the Grishaverse like a little extra flavor to make it seem more realistic. Like, hey, these fictional places have their own folklore. Here it is. So it's kind of just like a nice little book to like make all the other books seem a little bit more vibrant. So it's just like kind of a fun book. I mean, it wasn't like, wow, I'm so amazed by this. It was just fun. It's cute. It's a nice little addition to the series. I also finally read King of Scars by Lee Bardugo. I was desperate to read this because I kind of, I'm like kind of obsessed with Nikolai. I think it's safe to say. He's one of my favorite characters. And now he has his own little duology. So I was like, yes, give me all of the Nikolai goodness. Gimme, gimme, gimme. Real talk, because you guys are going to get the truth from me. I honestly wasn't blown away by it. Ugh, it hurt. It hurts to say that. But I gave it 3.5 stars. Like, I, I honestly, it, it could have been better. Like, it just, it honestly feels like it's an elaborate backstory for the next book. It's like, the next book is going to be great, but this book you just have to drag yourself through so all the rest of the stuff in the next book makes sense. And at some moments, it was really nice and I appreciated the emotional depth I got but a lot of the time I was just like I don't care because you're not hitting you're not hitting the emotional depth point here you're so busy like with the environment and maybe like a physical action that's going on that you're not checking in with the characters emotions this wasn't a bad book by any means like I don't want people to hate me for saying this it just felt like there was, there was an opportunity to really get in depth here and I think it was missed. The last epic fantasy I read was The Hero of Ages by Brandon Sanderson. These are very dense, like these are thick books. And I mean, I read thick books, like you just saw King of Scars, that's a thick book, but it's not nearly as dense as this series is. Like there's so much on every page that you have to pay attention really hard <laughs> like so it's kind of like a marathon I will say like the pacing was a little up and down throughout the book and there were parts I really really enjoyed like the same with all the books in the series there were parts that were felt like that's an odd choice to go like there were some odd points of it but like I did really appreciate how it ended even though the ending does feel weird 
Like, I, I like how everything shook out. It's kind of a happy ending, and I wanted one. This has a lot of, like, unhappy moments in it that I'm like, all right, all right. <laughs> like, our plucky heroes save the day, and I was, like, into it. <laughs> The one part of this book that kind of took me by surprise was that one of the narrators was this character called Spook, and Spook had been in all the books but kind of as like a complete side character, but now he's like all grown up and he's a narrator in this, and like, I was like, damn, when does Spook become such a badass? Like, I was way into the Spook chapters, like I wanted, like every time he left his chapters, I wanted to go back. So that kind of like really was surprising to me that this side character is all of a sudden like really cool, like complete surprise. And yeah, there was weird parts of this. There was really good parts of it. But overall, like I, I like how it shook out. I thought it was a good finale. Next category is urban fantasy. And I read two of those this month. I keep continuing on with the Kate Daniel series. I just want to finish it, but I've slowed myself down to one book a month so I don't run out of books too fast. This book I was really interested in because this is book eight and in book seven, they completed like the main story arc of all the books. There's this big story arc about Kate having this showdown with her father who is a big bad guy. And that happens in book seven. And there are three more books in this series, so what happens now after like the main thing is accomplished this was really cool because it went into like a lot of arabian mythology for example there's ifrits there's jinn in it there's a lot of cool arabian mythology that you don't see in a lot of books so i felt like that mythos was really fun to read about i don't know like i really like that other storyline so now that it's over it's just like you keep going on but like i don't know what this new arc's gonna be yet like by the end of the book, I kind of know what the new arc is gonna be. I don't know how I feel about it right now. This was kind of like an odd, like an odd book for me. They still had like all of the humor and the action I loved. It's just like, I'm not sure where I am with this new story arc yet. Like I felt like a little off put by it. So, I mean, I'm still gonna continue. I just, I'm not sure if I, uh, ugh, this new story arc is like a little irksome, but it's okay. I also read Slayer by Kirsten White. This was not on my TBR list, but I saw it on my shelf and I was like, I need to read you right now. <laughs> so I like bumped it up. In my heart of hearts, I am a diehard Buffy fan. I grew up watching Buffy. I grew up watching Angel. Like I've seen all the episodes. I love the show. So when I heard Kirsten White is going to be doing a Buffy book, that's happening in canon with the series like I was like over the moon because Kirsten White is one of my favorite authors and then like Buffy one of my favorite stories oh my gosh you combine them into one thing it hurts me to say this but I was kind of let down first of all before anything else this is so in canon with like really little minute details even about the series that I feel like someone who isn't a big Buffy fan would not pick up on the jokes or would not understand what they're talking about. So it's not for the average reader. This is definitely a niche audience for just people who really know Buffy trivia. That's fine for me. I recognized all of the cameos I saw in this book, but if you're more of a casual fan or maybe you haven't seen Buffy, like you're gonna be so lost in this book. You're gonna be like, who are these people? Why do I care about them? Like, You're gonna be very confused. Also, like, so much of this story is based solely around everyone lying to each other. And it's just that annoying thing you get in, like, fantasies where you're just like, if you know some shit, tell people some shit. Otherwise, everyone's gonna get eaten by monsters. Like, I don't understand why people just don't spit it out. Like, just say what you mean. And it was so tiresome with everyone lying to each other the whole time. It's just like... I wasn't even sure what was going on anymore. It was kind of a letdown. I'm gonna say it, it just was. There were some moments that I really did appreciate. The ending was pretty cool. I'll appreciate the ending, but like for three pages of dope in a whole book, like that's a lot. <laughs> so, I mean, it wasn't enough to like raise my rating any. And you know, the thing is, I'm gonna be honest, I'm totally reading the next book. Like, I'm not not gonna read another Buffy book. Like, I just am. But, uh, it could have been better. I'm just gonna be honest, it really could have been better. And it bummed me out that it wasn't as good as I hoped it would be. 
Next category is Victorian era, and I read three books that took place during that time period. First off, I read Jacoby by William Ritter. Surprise hit. I didn't know I was going to enjoy this as much as I enjoyed it. It was so much fun to read. I was, like, I thought I would enjoy it, but then, like, I enjoyed it quite a bit. Like, I was impressed. It's kind of like Buffy meets Doctor Who meets Sherlock Holmes with a dash of like fantastic beasts thrown in like <laughs> it's the best way to describe it and it's surprisingly very accurate our protagonist is a girl named abigail and she is looking for adventure and she finds herself in the employ of one mr jacoby and he's kind of just a paranormal investigator and a scientist and victorian era he's solving murders where the perpetrators are probably of paranormal origins so you have a lot of weird going on with a lot of normal at the same time and done in a sarcastic way so it's really funny just from the visuals and i really enjoyed it it was very acerbic it was very fun it was action it had cool monsters like it was kind of a surprise hit i was really impressed with it next up i read a sorrow fierce and falling by jessica Cluse. i'll just say this book put me through the emotional ringer intensely. I was so happy and so devastated at the same time. I didn't know how I f how to feel. <laughs> Sorrow, Fears, and Falling is the finale to the Kingdom on Fire series. And by the way, I cannot recommend this series enough. It is so good. It's so good. Like Jessica Clues is kind of a genius. I think she's an incredible writer. Long story short, considering this is the finale, there are interdimensional monsters roaming the English countrysides. And uh, the only way to defend the country from them is through like an army of sorcerers. Sounds cool, right? <laughs> this book in particular though, it was just like Jessica Cluse was like, oh, you love this character? Hold on, I'm about to murder them. Like, ah! <laughs> there were some moments where I was like just straight ugly crying over these characters because like, Stop murdering people I like, you monster! <laughs> so I was so unhappy at times in this book, like sobbing. And then other times where I was so happy at certain things and that happened in the book that I was like so happy and then I was so sad and then so happy again. So yes, I was like all over the place emotionally with it. But I genuinely love this series. And you know what? I'm kind of happy with how everything shook out in this, even though there were so many deaths. I'm satisfied with the conclusion. I kind of feel like the door is a bit ajar, so there could be more books in the series. I don't think she's gonna write them, but if she did, there is a possibility for them. And I had a lot of fun with the series. I completely recommend. It's really funny and it's really like action-packed and it's really good. I also read A Madness So Discreet by Mindy McGinnis. Oh boy, this was dark. Like right from the beginning. Grace is in a mental institution because she is pregnant and um, it's her father's. Her father raped her and now she's pregnant and they threw her in a mental institution. Like it, it's very apparent from the first page. So that's not really a spoiler. Um, but whoo, what a way to start a book! <laughs> so yes, it starts off in a very, very dark place. Mental institution, pregnant girl who was raped by her father. So right away, okay, I know what I'm getting into. And then as you're going through the story with Grace, uh, she's learning like to really be confident with herself and find her own agency again. And it's not really a story about a girl overcoming abuse. It's more a story about a girl who was abused, who then goes on to hunt murderers. Essentially all the trauma in her life has shaped her mind to operate in such a way that it makes her very good at catching murderers. And her doctor is a pathologist and a criminal psychologist, so he's very interested in that, so he kind of takes her to murder scenes. It's like, hey, let's find clues. <laughs> I did appreciate the fact that this is about a girl finding her own agency through catching murderers and also finding justice, and it's kind of a really cool, like, mystery a little bit, and I appreciated it quite a bit from that standpoint, 
There were some moments in it that were questionable. There's a couple scenes in here where something very either violent or traumatic happens and it's not really gone into with any details. It kind of gets glossed over and I feel like that would have been a big deal. So there are some moments in it that I felt were like a little off in their handling but overall it's really really dark but kind of really really good so like i i think you should read it but just be prepared going in like it's very dark <laughs> next category is ya contemporary and i read two of those this month i kind of want to bring these up together both these stories are very different obviously from the covers but i feel like they're both have one thing in common which is that the female protagonist is very unlikable and that's fine. Like I've read a lot of stories with unlikable female protagonists and those are some of my favorite books of all time. Like they don't have to be likable for them to be interesting. That's not the point. However, when you have like a YA contemporary where the story arc is an unlikable character growing as a person and then finding a way to like love themselves by the end of it, the character has to become likable because if the character doesn't become likable by the end of the book, you're just like, so you're just happy being an asshole? What's wrong with you? <laughs> like, that's the problem here. It depends what you're trying to get out of the book. Like if you have a story arc where you have an unlikable character, but they're, it's not their ambition to become a better person, that's not the goal of their book. So by the end of the book, if they're still unlikable, that's fine. If the point of the book is to, you know, come to grow as a human and like yourself, she needs to become likable. You get what I mean? That being said, The Way You Make Me Feel by Marine Goo, I absolutely loved. It just kind of, I read it at the right moment, at the right time, and it's just basically a big love letter to Los Angeles. <laughs> and like, I loved it so much. The main character, Clara, does need a smack upside the head a lot. She is kind of a brat and a half. But by the end of the book, she does learn a life lesson. And you know what? She might not be the best by the end of it, but she's definitely grown. And she's, you find something that's likable about her. And it was funny, it was uh, cute. And you know, it's just a big fluffy rom-com and I was super into it. I really, really recommend this if you just want something light and fluffy and fun. And then you have Dumplin'. I'm just gonna be honest. Um, I was really let down by Dumplin'. I know it's a hypey book and everyone loves it so much, but like, I honestly didn't think it was that good. Like I, I kept waiting for that moment where you're like, wow, this book is amazing. And like, it never happened. And it goes back to that same thing. But Willow Dean is not really a likable character. She's very judgmental and she's kind of a bitch. Like, honestly, she's like, she's not like the best person to be around. And then by the end of the book, she's the exact same person. Like she doesn't change. The whole point of this book is Willow Dean learning a life lesson and then growing as a person and learning to love herself. That is the point of the book. Like I was saying, she has to be likable by the end of the book. <laughs> if she's not likable by the end of the book, you're just reading about someone who's okay with being an asshole and that's not cool. Like what? <laughs> really, by the end of the book, Maybe she's slightly less judgmental, but I still feel like she's very much a judgmental person by the end of this book. And it kind of ends with no resolution whatsoever. It just ends and you're just like, wait, 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 wait. So what happened? <laughs> like, it just ends all of a sudden and you're like, wait a minute, nothing's resolved yet. So I don't know, I don't know. Everyone loves this. And I'm like, did I read the same book? Is this a different version of it? I don't know, but it's just, the unlikable character needs to be likable by the end, if that's the point of their story, and she wasn't likable by the end of it. So, it, it wasn't necessarily bad, but like, it, it wasn't great, I'll say that. Next category is disappointments, and um, I read two this month that were pretty disappointing. I read the first book of the series, Renegades, and honestly, wasn't wowed by it, I thought it was okay. It kind of had the right idea but didn't execute it properly so I thought okay you know what maybe it's a rough start to a series you know I'm gonna pick up Arch Enemies maybe it's gonna like clear up any like problems I had with that book so I went in thinking all right this is gonna be it like it's gonna fix all the things I had a problem with 
the thing is, all the things I had a problem with are actually just part of the plot, so I don't like it. <laughs> the whole time I was reading this, it just became more and more apparent that I didn't give a fuck about any of these characters. Zero fucks. None to give. Like, I'm, like, I'm bankrupt of fucks. <laughs> I kept thinking about, like, these side characters and the plot that happened before this series took place and how that would have been a really, really cool story and fuck all these people. This story is not fascinating. This is not a fascinating story. What's interesting is the backstory behind this where it was the original war to stop the Age of Anarchy where the renegades came along and they stopped Ace Anarchy, who was like basically a villain who was running the world at that time and like, honestly, that would be such a cool story, legitimately. Especially because now I kind of know the characters who are now adults, because that was them when they were younger. That would have been an excellent story. And I keep thinking about those characters and how they would have interacted with each other and how the Age of Anarchy would have been and like their thought processes and how they thought they were saving the world when they really weren't. And like, then I realized, oh no, I'm reading this book. I'm not reading that other book that I just made up in my brain that's a million times better than this one. So, you know, red flag number one. <laughs> if I can make up better stories from the material I have than what I'm reading, obviously it's not holding my attention. And this one, it just lacks any depth of these characters. Like I get somewhat why they're doing what they're doing, but like, is not a deep emotional thing here. It's, she's not getting there. She's just skimming the surface of things. And you need to get deeper in this story because this is about a person who's planning to betray all of their friends. Like that's an important thing. And when you don't get deep into that psyche and into those emotions, you just get on the surface of things. You don't give a fuck about any of these people. So that's the problem I'm having with the series. Like, uh, I know there's one more book, and like every part of me doesn't give a fuck what happens to these people, but like I know I'm gonna read it because I'm a glutton for punishment apparently, but ugh, like it's such a letdown. I gave it two stars, like two, guys. And it hurts because I really love the Lunar Chronicles. It's one of my favorite series. Is. But this, it's just, it's just garbagey. It's not good. I feel like she's writing the wrong story. Like the story that I came up with with the backstory, would have been so juicy emotionally and I'm like why isn't she writing about that like that would be so much more interesting than all these stupid people in this <laughs> it had its moments but I don't really recommend it I don't think it's that good the next letdown I read was Highlander Ever After by Paula Quinn this was actually a buddy read I read this with Bethany from Beautifully Bookish Bethany I'll leave a link to her channel down below and I read this with my friend Jessica, who actually just started a booktube channel, like, really recently. So I'll leave a link to her channel down below. It's called The Tiny Tea Set. If you enjoy my acerbicness, then you would totally like Jessica. <laughs> like, she's a really cool lady. I recommend her channel. I DNF'd it 52%. Um, I don't feel bad for DNFing if I read at least half the book. So I did. I read 52%. And then I was like... I can't stand this and I won't read anymore. <laughs> I thought maybe it was just me because I don't always like historical romance. I know I'm trying to and there's certain authors I like, like obviously Tessa Dare, I have all her books out right here. I freaking love them. Sarah McLean sometimes, there are authors I like, but there's also a lot of historical romance that I don't like. So I didn't know if it was just me who thought this was like so dull, like the dullest of dolls that ever dulled. And so I was like, hey, so do you guys like this? And um, spoiler alert, they didn't like it either. We all thought it was bad. <laughs> so I felt a little better that it wasn't just me being judgmental. It was bad for everyone. It's legit so boring. Um, it's about uh, this woman and she gets basically taken away from her family and sent to Scotland to marry this guy she's never met before. And like, I get it. That's a scary thing to happen. You like just got ripped out of your entire life and sent to a bunch of people that you've been told are barbarians. Like, yeah, you'd be freaked out. 
However, if when you get there, everyone's super nice to you and they like make you dresses to wear and like food and they're super cool all the time, you can't walk around being an asshole all day. Like no one wants to fuck with you. At a certain point, you have to get over it. Especially when your husband doesn't touch you without your permission. Like girl, you need to get over it. Like you could have done worse here. I kind of lost sympathy for her very quickly. Considering my 52% of the way in the book, she was only starting to not be a bitch. Like, it took half the book, half the book for her to get over it. And it's like, bitch, you should have been over by 20%. Like, <laughs> I can't with you. Like, at 52% in the way of the book, like, they had kissed once, like one time. And then I skimmed the rest of it. They do it like one time and like, almost 90% of the way in and I was like I can't I can't they're not even fucking in it like no like it's boring and there's no sex and honestly I think she'd be a lousy lay if she's that whiny all the time like I can't I can't with these people so yeah I didn't like it <laughs> I dnf'd I I couldn't with this it was it was tragically dull so dull the dullest last category is wicked spirits book club I keep mentioning this over and over again, but the Wicked Spirits Book Club is with me, and it's with Lauren from The Novel Lush and Brandy from Brandy Janae's Bookshelf. We have a urban fantasy paranormal romance book club, so every month we read a book together and we do a live show. This month, the book of the month was Night Chaser by Amanda Boucher. And um, I don't wanna get too into it because I know we are gonna discuss it more in the live show. So bottom line, I gave this four stars. I genuinely liked it a lot. It actually had some smut in it for once because we had been not reading smutty books and we were all bummed about it. It's kind of a fun sci-fi um, adventure story and there were some issues I had with it. I felt like the world building was a bit shaky at times. Some of the character work felt a little off, but overall it was a super fun adventure story in space with, you know, heists and all kinds of stuff. So it was kind of fun. It was good. And it had funny bits. It had everything I wanted. I feel like I've been talking for like a long time. This is about time for me to shut up. Let me know in the comments down below. Have you read any of these books? If so, which ones are your favorites? Which ones are your least favorites? Do you disagree? Do you agree with me? Let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, make sure you give it a like. And if you want to see more videos, make sure you subscribe. And I'll see you guys soon. Bye.